Hi, thanks for joining me today, Wednesday, June 16th. And if you just stumbled upon this video and you've never seen my channel before, consider yourself very lucky because uh, the past number of videos that I've done, 100% have been seen by my subscribers. So that means no one's, no one's finding this. So consider yourself real lucky and you might want to subscribe if you like what you see here today. But first, flame on. Today, we're going to talk about a big idea the fundamental attribution error. I'm gonna explain what that is and, and why today in particular. But uh, thanks for hitting that like button. And I hope by the end of this video, you're gonna learn something that you didn't know at the beginning. So why am I bringing this up today? Well, there was a article in the New York Times this morning about Lee Ross and he made one of the big discoveries in social psychology. He passed away last month, and so I wanted to talk about uh, some of his contributions to the field, including the big one that put him on the map. So let's go to the story from the New York Times. Lee Ross, expert in why we misunderstand each other, dies at 78. His argument about social situations, not personality, can govern behavior took hold in modern psychology and inspired thinkers like Malcolm Gladwell. Here's a sharp picture of him from 1965. He invented the idea of the fundamental attribution error. The term became a foundational concept in psychology and it provided a buzzy phrase to commentators on everything from leadership to crime fighting to workplace socializing. He passed away uh, May 14th at his home in Palo Alto. He remained on the staff at Stanford University until his death. Now, what is this thing you talk about, fundamental attribution error? It's a lot of syllables. Well, essentially, what it means is that we often will assign a reason for why other people do things based on their personality and not on their circumstance, when in reality, often, our behavior is because of our circumstance, not who we are as a person. Now, I'll give you an idea about this for myself. This morning, I went uh, to teach my fitness class, and I had to get on the freeway to get there. And there's people driving like idiots, and you know, people driving under the speed limit in the left-hand lane, and just being inconsiderate. And when I arrived at my class for you know the first couple minutes. I was in a rotten mood, but somebody, if they had just met me at that moment in time, they might think, wow, this guy's a jerk. His personality is terrible. When in reality, I was uh, just in a little bit of a bad mood because of all the terrible driving on the freeway, people cutting in front of me, making me break. And once I arrived, took a couple deep breaths, got into it, I was in a good mood again. But if you caught me right at the beginning when I got out of my car, I was in a terrible mood. And you could attribute that to me being a jerk, but it really had to do with the situation, the circumstance that I was in. Now, the way that this professor came up with this concept, the original experiment, was he would have a two people, and he would assign one to be a quiz master and one to be the quiz taker. And he told the quiz master, hey, come up with some trivia questions. Come up with a number of trivia questions. And uh, the quiz taker would then take that thing, and they would put on a little performance, and there would be uh, people observing it. And what they noticed afterwards, they would ask the, the observers what they thought about the quiz master and the quiz taker. And they would also often think, well, that, that the guy given the quiz, man, that guy seems really bright. He seems like a smart guy, well-educated. He knows all kinds of stuff. And the person taking the quiz, what an idiot. They didn't know any of the answers. They're probably really dumb. And you could just keep repeating this experiment. You could switch them, right? I mean, if you're writing your own trivia questions, you're going to pick things that you know. And when you give those questions, you're going to seem smart. 
And if it's questions you don't know anything about, it doesn't mean that you're a dumb person or uneducated. You just don't happen to know about that particular field. The observers would project onto these people uh, it being about their personality or about who they are as a person rather than the circumstance that the person is in. Now, one of the biggest promoters of this idea has been Malcolm Gladwell. He's talked about this in pretty much every one of his books. But it really is an important discovery in psychology. And if you are aware of that, uh, you can do a better job of understanding the people that are around you. You know, often we'll attribute other people's bad behavior to them being a bad person. But when we do the exact same thing, we give ourselves an excuse because we know why we're acting that way. Now, besides the fundamental attribution error, Professor Ross became known for his work on other psychological blunders, including the false consensus effect. The bias people have toward thinking their perceptions are more common than they are. Now, the fundamental attribution error does not explain everything, and it's not all. Hashtag not all. If your friend is always late every time you meet them, that's their personality. But if it's a person you don't know and they're late the first time you meet them, they may have a really good reason for being late. In fact, you know if you're late for something, maybe you're never late, but this one time that you were late because that you had a good reason for it, you don't think that you're a terrible, inconsiderate person. You had a reason for it. But for some reason, when we look at other people, we don't consider those other reasons. We just say they're a bad person. They're inconsiderate. You know, the fundamental attribution error is actually a reason why a lot of people hate bicyclists. Right? If you're not a bicyclist, you don't understand why you may roll through a stop sign or behave in a certain way like that. But if you're on the bicycle, it makes perfect sense. But when you see a bicyclist right, in a certain behavior, you're just saying, oh, they're a bad person because they're, they're uh, biking in this manner. When in reality, it's the situation, not the person that's more likely to blame. Those are just a couple examples of the fundamental attribution error. If you've got an example, let me know in the comments. Hope you're having an awesome day. Peace. Thank you.